the manual ventilation competency-based objective should start with a thorough overview of both the structure and the function of the manual resuscitation bags. This includes sizes, parts required, assembly, relative FiO2s, as well as a checkout procedure. The student challenging the CBO should be prepared to show a manual checkout procedure of this device. This includes, but is not limited to, pressure test, oxygen filling of the reservoir, O2 overflow, as well as the air inlet valves, and explaining all the valves that are being tested during the specific procedure. The CBO is generally challenged in a simulated environment. This does not exclude the fact that the student should perform a rapid assessment of the patient including airway and its patency, breathing and its adequacy, as well as be prepared to talk about circulatory assessments. Use aseptic technique throughout the procedure. Wash hands at a sink or with an approved alcohol-based product and don gloves for all aspects of the procedure at the patient's bedside. Identify the patient, yourself, the department that you represent, and your role as a respiratory therapy student at NBCC SJ. Properly position the patient with the alignment of the airway. This includes slight extension at the atlanto-occipital joint. The evaluator may also assess the alignment procedures using a chin lift or modified jaw thrust procedure. You should be prepared for both. Depending on the patient's facial anatomy or the relative state of consciousness, an oral pharyngeal airway may need to be used. The individual should demonstrate the relative sizing of the airway as well as insertion technique during the challenging of this competency-based objective. Place an appropriate size face mask on the patient, obtaining a tight seal with the mask covering the mouth and the nose. The upper two fingers should form a C, with the lower three fingers forming an E. The C and the E positionings should be pulled together such that the rescue breather is properly positioned over top and maintaining a tight seal. This may also be adapted for two-person ventilation, but the individual holding the masks used both hands for doing this procedure. Note the relative positioning of the hands here, the three lower fingers forming the E going along the crest of the mandible. There is no specific tidal volume recommended for adults. Instead, the tidal volume should be sufficient to achieve visible chest rise with inspirations taking approximately one second. Provide eight to ten breaths per minute, or one breath every six to eight seconds, when delivering ventilation during CPR, and ten to twelve breaths per minute, or one breath every five to six seconds for ventilation without chest compressions. In other words, for a respiratory arrest without cardiac arrest. Each breath should last for one second. Assess and monitor the effectiveness of ventilation of the patient, including heart rate, entitled CO2, pulse oximetry, and arterial blood gases. Discontinue the manual ventilation when appropriate to do so. This may be when ventilation is no longer required, or when the initiation of mechanical ventilation, having placed an artificial airway, is undertaken. Ensure that you discuss your findings with other members of the Allied Healthcare team, as well as notifying the preceptor to whom you are assigned. You should also chart and document the procedure according to the local policy and procedure at the site at which you are rotating. With a thorough review of the equipment, its structure and function, hand positioning, 
as well as manual ventilation procedure, it is anticipated that the student will be successful in the challenging of this competency-based objective on manual ventilation. Thank you.